Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Kishore from Tested. And Kishore, today you're gonna to be joined again by Zeke Kosover from the Exploratorium. Preeminent museum of science in the world. And Zeke is gonna show you a simple feat of science. I'm really excited. It's gonna be an awesome demonstration, one that it kind of stuck with me for a little bit, so I hope you guys enjoy. Joining me is Zeke Kosover from the Exploratorium, the Museum of Science, Art, and Human Perception. He's a teacher there, and we have a microwave, something that's in everybody's home. What are we gonna do with a microwave? Just boil water? <laughs> So many people think that microwaves are uniquely tuned to make water boil. Um, but it turns out that microwaves are a more general purpose thing than that. Um, the frequency of the microwave, it's uh, about 2 billion hertz or so, 2 gigahertz. Um, it's, uh, does the, that frequency drives charged particles. It makes charged particles move back and forth. Um, in water, uh, water has a positive side and a negative side. So it forces the water to move back and forth and that heats up the water. That vibration some, generates heat. Right, through sort of friction on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, but anything else that has charged particles in it, you can drive those charged particles back and forth. And if there were some way to see those charged particles moving in action, well then you could see something cool. And that's what I have set up in here. Let me show you what we got. 10 seconds. Ready? Whoa! It's like what? a disco party <laughs> in your kitchen. What kind of light bulbs are in there? So those aren't regular light bulbs. These are neon indicator lamps. Um, sometimes you'll see them in uh, light switches to know that you've, you've turned them on. Um, for example, there are these oh, little yeah. guys. These little guys like this. And they grow that, glow that little orange. orange. Yeah, that reddish orange color, yeah. And they're just filled with a little bit of neon, neon gas. gas. And they have these two little metal plates in there and we can drive the charges back and forth across the plate and make, between the two what, plates, what and make the, the neon glow. And so it's simply the microwave hitting them. But what I noticed in there is that the pattern of colors, they would go on and off. Right, so. As the microwave rotated. So the generator of the micro microwaves on the inside called a magnetron sends the uh, microwave radiation inside the chamber and it bounces all around. In some places it's more powerful and some places it's less powerful. Let's do it again and see, we can demonstrate it as we're going along. And so it glows more where it's more powerful and it glows less where it's less powerful. And sometimes the ones will block each other and that'll make them go out as well. Like one will be absorbing it and so the light, the energy can't get to another one of the neon bulbs. Is this why modern microwaves have turntables? That's because right. Because there's dead zones essentially? Exactly, exactly. And so, uh, yeah, so there's some places that get more of that radiation and you wanna make sure the food doesn't just stay stuck there. So I noticed you only did it for 10 seconds. Is there a reason you don't go longer yes. than that? So the, the, the little neon bulbs will get, get hot over time from it, just like your food does. And we could eventually catch things on fire. Here, let me show you what the little board looks like. Mm -hmm. And it, it's in fact already a little bit warm. You can feel it. Oh yeah, just a little bit. It's yeah. not burning hot no, or anything. No. This so, is an acrylic board? Yeah, so this is an acrylic board. And then I drilled a, a, a grid of holes into the acrylic board. And then I pushed the, the bulbs into the holes and then put, set them with a little bit of hot glue to hold them in place. And I made some feet out of a, some more little pieces of acrylic I found at the store and, and glued it on. indicator lights, they're easy to come by? They're easy to come by. A neon indicator bulb, if you buy them in bulk, they're maybe 15 or 20 cents each. Um, yeah, and, you can, and it, they're really nice because you can then see different uh, places like where it's super hot or super cool microwave wise on the inside. In fact, you can see that some things, once they absorb micro, uh, once it absorb, get, the microwaves get absorbed by one thing, then it can't light up the board. So here I'm gonna put some water in. So even though what the water is doing, it's, it's just generating that sort of friction, it's still absorbing that mm. energy from the magnetron. Right, and so it can't go to other things. <laughs> oh, that's pretty dramatic right. with just a little bit of water. Yeah, so now there's just not as much energy available. And it's not anything like the glass isn't blocking the, the microwave radiation or any deflection is happening. No. It's pure no. energy absorption. Exactly, exactly. It's stealing. 
Is there anything else we can do with a microwave? There is. Um, this one is relatively safe as long as you don't run it for very long. If you do run it long enough, the acrylic will catch on fire and that will be bad. That would be bad. So uh, a short, short blast only. Um, and even with the short blast, things can get warmish on the inside. So you want to be careful about that. Um, but this one really didn't require safety glasses and I'm disappointed when an activity doesn't require <laughs> safety glasses. So let me show you something else. Like, so glass, as it turns out, um, can also absorb microwaves. Now, usually glass doesn't absorb the microwaves because although it has charged particles in here that the microwave is trying to move back and forth, they're frozen in place because the glass is a solid. So these are like impurities in the glass? Correct, correct. So because it's silicon dioxide is mostly what glass is and that doesn't have any charged particles. So but, what kind of charged particles are we So they add, about? this kind of glass is called soda glass, which means that they've add, added ions, usually sodium and potassium. It lowers the melting point and it also ha has other optical properties as well. Um, but then those charged particles inside the glass can be moved by the microwave if this were soft. Now, right now it's not soft, but we can work on that. Uh-oh, how are we gonna make it soft? So, in my experience, if you have something that you, a glass that you'd like to make. Uh, oh, right. We use a torch on it, and so that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna torch the glass until part of it gets red hot, orange hot, and starting to melt. And I'm gonna slam the door shut, and then I'll quickly press start and then that spot on the glass that is uh, uh, partially melted, then the charges can move around in it and it will start to absorb all the microwaves in that one location and that spot will just get- Just in that one spot. Just in that one spot. And so they'll get very, very hot. And when we'll see if we're lucky, we'll be able to melt the bottle. And you're just trying to get that orange glow hot. Right. And then yeah, immediately turn on. Slam it and press the start button. All right, are we ready to give this a try? Um, so needless to say, using a torch inside your house is a good way to burn your house down. Um, that's metal inside the microwave. There's this, oh, this little plastic thing. Probably don't need that in there. Um, but you know, a torch inside your microwave is probably going to ruin your microwave. So only do this on a microwave you um, have permission to do so. <laughs> Whoever is the sort of person who gives you permission. This, this microwave gave us permission. Yes. And it'll just take a, a couple minutes or moments to get it that hot. And you're not even moving it around. You're just trying to jet hot. Right. I want to get that one spot. It's starting to glow orange. And that glow orange, is that coming from the sodium? Yeah, but we need oh, also fingerprints are burning off as well. But I want to make sure it stays orange after I move the torch away. So we still need to get hotter than that. And you can see it, the glass is starting to deform yeah. as it's turning more liquid. I was too slow. All right. Oh, so it's starting to glow right oh, there. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. Oh, it's glowing white. And why is there a slightly different color here than what we saw with the, the neon? It's just the pattern from right, the sodium Right, different the chemicals potassium. on the inside, yeah. Whoa! That glass is full on melting. There's a molten drip of it going down. Oh, and it's really bright. Let's go for another few seconds. <laughs> and how far can you take this? Well, you can melt it pretty much all the way to slag. You can make it fall, fall apart. Um, the hard part is after you're done melting it as much as you would like, um, because the glass then there's no way to temper the glass and tempering glasses is can you explain the tempering so process the problem is is that glass doesn't conduct heat super well and so uh different parts will cool off at different rates and so if one part's really hot and the other part's cold they'll change they have different uh, amounts of expansion and so they will crack as they cool off um, and it will shatter so it's not a very good way to like blow glass at home, mm -hmm. but it is cool. So if you're looking to do this with a piece of glass, you recommend the, the soda glass. Yeah, you want a soda glass. You want to take off the labels because that'll, they'll catch on fire. And then when you're finally uh, 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 had enough of melting the glass, what you need to do is you need to turn off the microwave 
and let it stay there. It's going to crack, guaranteed. So until you hear it crack, you wanna leave it in. And of course the glass is very, very hot. Cold glass and hot glass look kind of the same. So just because it so looks it's like it's sharp and it's it, sharp and, and it's hot now. It's hot right now, right? It's gonna take it a while for it to cool off and eventually we'll hear it crack. It may take it uh, 10 or 15 minutes for it to cool off enough um, for it to, to break from this differential heating, but it's going to do it eventually. Thanks, Zeke. If people want to learn more about this experiment and others like it, where can they go? Uh, so they can go to www.exploratorium.edu or they can come visit us at Pier 15 on the Embarcadero in San Francisco. And you can download a list of instructions for this activity and so many more at the Exploratorium's website or look down below in the show notes. Thanks so much, Zeke. Thank you. <laughs> that was pretty quick. <laughs> I was taught growing up not to put crazy mm -hmm. things in the microwave, but I think we did it today. I think that's still good advice, not to put crazy things in the microwave. It, it was amazing to see those neon lights just light up in a flash when the microwave went off. I never thought about a microwave that way, or at least I typically didn't. I always think about it as vibrating the, that hydrogen-oxygen bond in, in water, but the fact that it can move other uh, items equally and generate um, uh, energy, especially in metals, was, was fascinating to see in action. It also illustrated why microwave needs to spin whatever object you're trying to cook with it or heat up with it because it's uneven distribution. Well, it's because there's only one magnetron in there. I guess we could soup up a microwave and eliminate those dead zones. Now, melting the glass. That was Super gorgeous. Cool. I mean, we, we always think about glass as a solid, but there we saw it really liquefied in a beautiful pattern and seeing that sort of sodium impurities in the in the soda glass come through and that brilliant orange light as it sort of came down, it stopped it just in time, let's just say. Otherwise it would have been a difficult cleanup, I think, if the liquid glass got to the bottom of the microwave, but it was beautiful. And I do want to reiterate to everyone, even though this is something you technically can do at home, don't do it at home if you don't want to break your microwave or potentially set your house on fire. Please be careful. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of those that you should definitely take appropriate precautions if you if you think about doing at home. But more importantly, it's really going to make that microwave not functional or usable in a, in a way that you wanna cook your food in it anymore. Well, I wanna thank Zeke for bringing that experiment to us. And if you guys have experiments you'd like to see us test on this channel, please submit your thoughts and your suggestions in the comment section below. Until then, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, Kishore and I, See you next time. Bye.